from the Barbados Today Newsroom. This is your news update for Tuesday, May 10. Six new faces have joined the 15-member board of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Health and Wellness Minister Ian Gooden Edgel today revealed. There are Mubarak Nakuda, who will be responsible for engineering matters, Natasha Small on Finance, Sai Francis on Information Technology, John Martineau, Management Operations, Rene Brathwaite on Paramedical Services, Senator Dr. Crystal Haynes, Medicine, and Professor Clive Landis, the new representative of the University of the West Indies. Minister Gooden Edgel said the new team brings a wide variety of management skills and experiences, which will help to deliver the changes needed at the hospital. The new board has been mandated to develop a six pillar business plan, which will focus on people, sustains funding, improvement in services, revenue management, more efficient systems and processes, and healthcare financing. The operators of small shops and minimarts are doing their best to ride out the impact of the high cost of living on their businesses. Melville Knight, the owner of the L&M Bar, told Barbados today, times are tough. I said a decrease in customers because people, the prices are so high. And, and, and then to, to get these things put in place is difficult for small business at this present moment. And it's a pain in your heart when you have to pay water, light, phone, utilities, and then people that you owing before this COVID has occurred. It is a hard and one of the most hardship times. Forget everything, sacrifice, especially when you're dealing with, with meat. Everything is, is skyrocketing, and people not want to pay the price for food because of the height increase in it. But Clayton Jones of Wholesale Variety says while he has seen a fall off in customers, they have reduced their spending. I've seen a fall off in customers. What I see a fall off is in the buying power, right? They look at because it's basically looking at the necessities and. Cutting back on the amount that they're gonna spend. Get you get an increase though of people trying to source products out of later day. It's not very big, right? But I used to see an increase of that. People want to um, get some stuff and then pay as they get paid, you know. So we got to accommodate them people also. Radhika, who operates Dika Barbecue, says business is mixed. It depends on the day. Sometimes it's fluctuate. But regardless of the price raising or it dropping, people can adjust to it. So, you can't complain. Barbados' call for development financial institutions to revamp the criteria for developing countries to access financing is getting the backing of the Caribbean Development Bank. CDB President Dr. Jean Leon said the current system is not in the region's favour. Prime Minister Mia Motley has been calling for a change in the concessional financing rules employed by the development finance institutions. Irrespective of how good you've improved, how much better you've improved, the things that prevent us from growing have not changed. The constant repetition of being hit by natural disasters have not changed. The shocks that we have from external factors have not changed. Our structural issues, whether it be of size, and let's take TCI, the breadth of countries that have to each have social services at a cost that is astronomical relative to the number of people has not changed. But yet, because you have made a little progress, then you become penalized for having made that progress by not having access to finance. And so we have now thought to, and we are in the process of advocating on this, that we need to think about this differently. And we need to think about it differently from the simple perspective that what really matters is not the income that you have achieved, but your ability to recover when you have a crisis that has actually hit you. Dr. Lyon was addressed in a media conference on Tuesday to announce the upcoming CDB 52nd Annual Meeting of the Board of Governors, which is scheduled for June 1 to 16 in the Turks and Caicos. It will take place in a hybrid format. 
He said discussions will focus on three broad areas. The first is the measure better to target better. And that in itself, even if it is just a phrase, has a lot going on in the background, so much so that we are making it the entirety of what we want to talk about in the annual meeting this year. But there's a second equally important one, which is we need to marshal development finance. And that's the second big area that we are focused on at the bank. And it will be part of, but not given as much prominence in the annual meetings deliberations. And the third is we need to share to grow. Uh, and that's almost like uh, turning, the, turning the, the cat around we tend to think if we hold, we will grow, but the truth is we need to give to grow. And it's that sharing that will make a difference. In today's COVID-19 update, a total of 598 people, 263 males and 335 females, tested positive for the viral illness from the 2,083 tests carried out on Monday by the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases consisted of 173 persons under the age of 18, and 425 who were 18 years and older. There were 110 people in isolation facilities, while 4,295 are in home isolation. As of May 9th, there were 430 COVID-19 related deaths. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sorry. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Runs with sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Pure oxygen, natural spring water, infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To regional news in Trinidad and Tobago, the hopes of safely finding a point fourteen toddler who went missing on Monday were dashed for his family after his body was discovered in a river located near his home on Tuesday morning. Crystal Wilson tells us the entire village of Point Fourteen is mourning the death of Kamani Francis. I actually spent five hours in the river yesterday searching every part of the river on that terrain, you know, shifting alligator aside, trying to bring some sort of relief, some sort of love to the family. The saying it takes a village to raise a child rang true on Monday for Point Fourteen residents and they took the commitment a step further with the entire community coming together from Monday, all of Monday night and into Tuesday morning to locate missing two-year-old Kimani Francis who reportedly walked away from his mother's Tisha village home on Monday morning never to return. Following extensive searches by the members of the Hunters Search and Rescue Team, the Trinidad and Tobago Police service, members of the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force, a concerned resident who joined the search teams to help find the missing boy, was the one to make the unfortunate discovery almost 24 hours later. Reports are that Kimani's body was found in the Guapo River approximately one mile from his home at 10 a.m. It really, really hard. It really hard for us. Last night, we, we actually, as hunters, we went out there with we headlights. We, we actually chromed that exact location mm. last night too. Yesterday, we was here many occasions, not one, many. About five times we was in that exact location. I actually went down in that water too. Mm. So it really sad to know at that exact location, you know, this, the, the, the two-year-old was found by a villager. On the international scene, UN agencies are warning that price hikes sparked by Russia's invasion of Ukraine will worsen a food crisis in Africa, where millions of people are already facing extreme poverty. David Doyle of Reuters reports. At a bakery in Harare, Mavis Tijokwe is mixing ingredients that are becoming scarcer and more expensive. 
Zimbabwe, once known as the breadbasket of Africa, has struggled to feed itself since the seizure of thousands of white-owned farms under late President Robert Mugabe. But the price rises here also indicate how Russia's invasion of Ukraine, as United Nations agencies are warning, will worsen a food crisis across the continent. Of late, uh, there's a shortage of baking fat. So our baking fat comes mostly from South Africa. And then the, the oil, most of it is being made locally. But then it has also risen, I'm sure due to the Ukraine uh, war and also the fuel costs going up. The Ukraine conflict has disrupted shipping in the Black Sea, throttling exports from Russia and Ukraine to markets including in Africa. Nearly half of the continent's 54 countries rely on Russia and Ukraine for wheat imports, says Abebe Hale Gabriel, Assistant Director General at the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization. This uh, war, uh, the Ukraine war, has, uh, is, is overlapping. The impact is overlapping with uh, a crisis that uh, has already been unfolding in several countries. Even before the war broke out, food inflation was pushing many African families to the brink. Global food commodity prices climbed over 23% last year, according to the FAO, the fastest pace in more than a decade. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.